should never have believed it possible. Rot. Silly rot. Idiots. What is the world coming to? Oh, I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon. I thought I was quite alone. You were referring to the dancing. <laughs> quite right. Quite right. My word, it's preposterous, isn't it? You mean so unconventional? That's a, hardly the word for it. Hardly the word for it. These coming out parties are not what they were when. Coming they... out? But my word, nobody seems to be in these days. <laughs> the young ladies, I mean. The young ladies. Exactly, exactly, yes, the young ladies. Well, my word, there doesn't seem to be much left for them to come out of. <laughs> you get this, you give you all arms and legs. <laughs> Won't you sit down, Colonel? General, madam. General. Oh, General. Pardon my mistake. Yes, we were speaking of the dancing. And you know, the world moves so fast nowadays that, well, I suppose the dancers must keep up with the world. The world? Running away with itself? Mm, it was different when we were young. I suppose we must be tolerant. We are old people. Oh, no, and oh, I beg your pardon. Oh, oh. oh. not really oh. Middle age, perhaps. Middle age. Yes, <laughs> That's it. Middle age. <laughs> Foolishly, sir. Couldn't live without her and all that sort of thing. <laughs> she was a snappy little thing. Clever. Pretty. Very pretty, as I remember. <coughs> Blue eyes, girl and hair. That sort of girl. And yet, you quite forgot her when you went away. Yes, yes, I quite forgot her. Quite forgot her. Life in the service is strenuous, you know. Besides, there's hunting and polo and that sort of thing. <laughs> And you married someone else? Never. I beg your pardon. No. No, I never married. Hadn't the time, matter of fact. And the young lady? Oh, I 
dear me, she's the mother of a large family now. Oh dear me, how times do change. As I was saying, I was very much in love with her at the time. At the time, I understand. But the family, her family, I understand, rather objected to me. So I, I broke off the whole affair, joined the Indian service, and I've been quite content. Quite. And you haven't tried to see this young lady <laughs> since you returned to England? See her? See her? Oh dear, no. <laughs> It might be a rather embarrassing to both of us. You see, we were practically engaged at the time. That is, I hadn't come right down to ask him, but you know how some things are understood, so to speak. And yet you went away and left. Well, not exactly left her. Let me see. Let me see. As I recall it, I believe I did ask her to marry me. Oh, and she refused. Hmm. Let me see. Did she refuse? Did she refuse? Oh, now I remember. She said we would have to think it all over very carefully. Yes, that's it. <laughs> Her very words. Very carefully. I remember how she wrinkled up a little snub nose. Sir, that's a very <laughs> personal yes, 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 a little snub nose. <laughs> Mind you, it was a nice little nose. And did you think it over carefully? Very carefully. Not at all. I was a bit of a wild dog in those days. <laughs> Most young men. <coughs> My pride was. Proud young fellow, like most young men, you understand? Of course, I expected her to fall in my arms and live there happily ever after. No, that is not in my arms. But as your wife, yes, I understand. As my wife, oh yes, yes. You were a romantic oh, youth. Very, very, exceedingly so. <laughs> I believe I must have been reading Disraeli's novels at the time. Rubbish. <laughs> and so you've quite lost all trace of the young lady. Quite. Oh, I was a conceited young ass, like most young men, you know. Wouldn't have risen for worlds. Several years after, I read in the Times that Anne had gone. Yes, Anne. Anne. Pretty name, isn't it? I was always fond of the name. As I was saying, several years after, I read in the Times that she had gone with her father to Florence. Since then, nothing. And so, your romance ended. It will never. Yes, quite so, it ended. And you never married? No, at the time, always busy. When you think of it now and then, not often, mind you, but now and then. Life in the service does get strenuous at times. <laughs> And the hunting season is off especially. They don't mind saying that a man should get married. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. My word. I did need someone to take care of him. Oh, but you've outgrown that need. Oh, yes. Quite. Oh, quite. And my man is very capable. Quite. There goes that infernal music. Florence. Have you really? 
Delightful place, Florence. Yes. Though perhaps a little lonely at times. Is it really? You know, I had always thought of it as quite gay. It just goes to show how mistaken one can be. Mm, yes. You know, I suppose you have your children about you and all that sort of thing? No, no, I never married. That's a bit unusual, isn't it? Is it? <laughs> and I suppose you never will? No. no. General Sir Richard Faddington. I beg your pardon. And uh, may I have the pleasure of knowing to whom I am indebted for a very pleasant conversation? May I have the pleasure of knowing to whom I have been speaking? Yes. I am Lady Anne Treves. Lady Anne Treves? Not Lady Anne of. Yes. Sir Richard. On my word, God bless my soul. Anne Trevis. <laughs> Anne Trevis, I might have known you the moment I saw you, but I must admit, I don't see so well as I used to. That is not quite so well. <laughs> Anne Trevis. Anne Trevis. And to think, after all these years, and in this very house. Yes, Richard. And you say you never married? No, I never married. On my word, but I thought... Well, you were mistaken. It was you that I loved then. And when you said we must think it all over very carefully, you really meant... Well, yes, I really meant... Oh, now, isn't that just like all? <laughs> <laughs> isn't that just like all? Is it? Hmm? Oh, I mean, what happy days were. Yes. Oh, well, isn't that a wolf they're playing? Yes. 